a look at a problem from chapter two that some students have trouble with, and that's number 53. In 53, we're trying to figure out how far a car will go before it comes to a complete stop. And this is a little bit more complicated than you might think. It involves a reaction distance, a braking distance, and then a stopping distance. And so to help uh, with figuring out what those uh, three things are, let's take a look at an example. Let's say you're driving down the road, and all of a sudden you notice a puppy on the road in front of you, and so you decide you're going to stop. Well, that's going to take some time uh, for your brain to say, hey, I better stop. It's also going to take some more time for you to move your foot off the gas pedal and over to the brake pedal and then apply the brakes. And so during that time you're reacting, the car keeps moving at a constant velocity. Now you've got the brake on and the car is going to uh, start slowing down and stopping. And so for the um, first part of it, maybe the car gets to here. And this distance would be the reaction distance. And that key thing here is that the velocity hasn't changed during the reaction distance. Now you're applying the brake at this point, and the car starts to slow down. It goes further, thankfully, not all the way to the puppy. And this is the braking distance. And the sum of the two is the stopping distance. So we can see for 10 meters per second, the reaction distance is 7.5 meters the braking distance, five meters, and if you add those two together, you get the 12 and a half meters in the table. And so what our job is going to be is to calculate the stopping distance for 25 meters per second, which is not given on the table. And to do that, we'll need to figure out the reaction time as well. And so to do this, we need to um, use our average velocity equation. That's pretty easy. Average velocity, it's distance over time. And I'm going to use the 10 meter per second data in the table. The rest of it is redundant. When you do this one yourself, maybe try using 20 or the 30 meter per second data. And so the average velocity is 10 meters per second during the reaction time because you're not changing your speed at all. The distance is given as seven and a half meters, that is from uh, the table up here. And so the reaction time, T, is just the distance over the average velocity, seven and a half meters over 10 meters per second, 0.75 seconds. You should check to see if that is the same for the other two speeds given in the table. Let's take a look at what the reaction distance would be for 25 meters per second now. We assume it's the same. Same person, takes the same amount of time to think and move your foot, et cetera. And so we can still use the average velocity equation, except now we solve it for distance. It's the average velocity times the time. The average velocity, 25 meters per second. Again, we're going to constant velocity. Nothing's changing. And the time is 0.75 seconds from above. And so we've got part of our work done here. The reaction distance for an initial velocity of 25 meters per second is 18.75 meters. Now we need to get the braking distance and to do that we need to find the acceleration of the car when it's braking. So again looking at the table for an initial speed of 10 meters per second the braking distance is given as 5 meters and I know my final velocity when I'm braking is 0 meters per second. So key thing now my velocity is changing and so 10 meters per second is not the average velocity. So a lot of different ways to do this problem. I'm going to keep using the simplest, uh, using average velocity here. You can find other ways of doing it. Nothing wrong with that, as long as it works. And so average velocity is the initial over the final over 2. It's just averaging two numbers together. And so 10 plus 0 over 2, we get an average velocity of 5 meters per second during the braking. So I can figure out the time it takes to stop. It's Again, using the average velocity equation, it's the distance over the average velocity, five meters over five meters per second, one second. And so the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. 
My final velocity is zero. My initial is 10. Make sure you don't confuse that with the average velocity. This is my initial velocity here, 10, over one second. So I get an acceleration of negative 10 meter per second per second. Now we can use that acceleration to calculate the braking distance. And so for an initial velocity of 25 meters per second, we, the acceleration is the same for all cases. It depends on the brakes in the car, not so much on the initial speed. And again, we're stopping, so the final speed we know. And so the time to stop uh, is V minus V0 over A, just how much time does it take to lose 25 meters per second when we're losing 10 every second that goes by. And so it's 0 minus 25 over negative 10, two and a half seconds. Uh, I can, again, keep using the average velocity equation. It's V0 plus V over 2. So I started out at 25, I ended up at 0, and so my average is 12 and a half. And so the distance, average velocity times the time, 12 and a half times 2 and a half, 31.25 meters per second. And so the stopping distance is just the sum of those two, 18.75 we found above, 31.25 we found now for the braking distance, total of 50 meters. Notice that it's not linear. If we go back up to our table, here we went from 10 to 20, and instead of the stopping distance going to 25, it went up to 35. And so that's one reason you want to always uh, obey residential area speed limits, because you do not have a good feel for how long it's going to take your car to come to a stop. If you had trouble with this one, I suggest you try and do it for another case. What about V0 of 35 meters per second? The reaction distance and the braking distance will be different. See if you can figure that out.